Hi, welcome back. My name is Kaylin Kennedy and this is still Making Sawdust. I know I haven't put out a video in just over three months and that's due in large part to the birth of my second daughter. But summertime is here and since I'm a high school math teacher I've got a couple months off and I'm hoping to get back on track with putting out a video every Friday, at least for the next couple months. Let me show you what I'm working on this week. A little over three years ago I painted an accent wall for my first daughter. Since I never like to do the same thing twice and I couldn't find another design I like using straight lines, I'm going to challenge myself and attempt this Moroccan design. I started by measuring the height and width of the wall. I divided the height by 2 and the width by 5. I think that will create a pleasing shape. This is what I came up with. This rectangle represents half the height and a fifth of the width. Using a framing square and a couple impromptu compasses, I laid out this Moroccan design. Since the corner of the rectangle is the center of another shape, I laid out the adjacent pieces as well. I wanted to make sure the void in between wasn't too big or too small because that's the part that will actually get painted. The next step for me is to cut it out with a circular saw and a router, but you could do it with a jigsaw if you took your time. Alright, template is done. Next step is to trace it onto the wall and then tape off the traced area. I guarantee you this is going to be the longest part of this process. After it's taped off, it'll just take a few coats of paint. <laughs> As you can see, I've already traced and taped the template once. But before I could do that, I had to mark out the horizontal spacing on the wall. That's why I have tape on the crown molding. On this piece of tape I made a mark about every 16 inches because the wall is just a bit more than 160 long. Then I drew a line vertically using a straight edge and level at each of these points. I put tape down here as well so that the lines wouldn't be on the finished wall. Finally I measured for vertical placement of the template. I found the middle as well as the upper and lower quarter of the wall. This marks the center of the template. Then I came up and down by 18 and 11 sixteenths. This shows me where to line up the top and bottom of the template, since I won't be able to see the center mark once it's in place. I was tempted to put a handle on the template, thinking it would help me hold it without it sliding around, but it turned out that this was entirely unnecessary. The template is so lightweight that one hand, even from an edge, can apply plenty of force to hold it in place and keep it from moving around. This made me really happy. So now it's time to start taping. I don't show much of it here, but this is the bulk of the project. I easily spent 12 hours putting more than 100 yards of tape on the wall. To handle the curves, I cut off a piece of tape, maybe a foot long, and then with a knife and straight edge, cut it into four thin strips. After curving the tape along the pencil line, I came back with short pieces to ensure paint wouldn't end up where I didn't want it. And now with all the full shapes taped off, it's time to cut the template in half to trace out the tops and bottoms. Throughout this project, I did get a lot quicker at taping the curves, but that doesn't mean I enjoyed it. I listened to a lot of music on my iPod during this part, and yes, I still have an iPod. One important step I learned when painting my first daughter's room is that once you're done taping, you need to put a coat of your wall color on top of the tape. This seals the edge of the tape and ensures clean, crisp lines when you put the accent color on. 
Make sure you get a good solid coat on here and don't be afraid to roll perpendicular to the tape to get a good seal. Finally, I get to put some color on the wall. Painting is all about prep, but when you're doing something like this, the prep is even more time consuming. It's such a great feeling when you know you're in the home stretch and can see some of the fruits of your labor. Still, while it wasn't the most tedious part, I don't really enjoy painting, and this was painting. And four hours later, more painting. Don't forget to cut in. And did I mention painting and painting and painting and painting and painting and painting and wait, 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 nope, nope, the painting is done. Carefully removing the tape, I have exposed some beautifully sharp, curvy lines. This is the payoff. Hours of tedium and focus, but now it is done and my daughter can enjoy it for years. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share, or subscribe. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I hope to have another video for you next Friday. Have a great weekend, and as always, get out there and make some sawdust. So today is June 16th, and this Sunday is Father's Day. I've got a few thoughts I'd like to share with you. I'd rather build it than buy it if I don't know how I can learn. It may not be perfect, but that doesn't mean I can't try. And with enough time, I can do anything. These are all things I learned from my dad. Not because he told me, but because he showed me, and I'm better for it. So thank you, Dad. You've always been my role model, and Happy Father's Day.